No spoilers. I will be doing a spoiler filled discussion video. I feel like I need to think on these further and possibly see the movie again. So let's get into what I think now. Let's just say this wasn't quite what I expected, and that's okay. The Flash was teased as one of the greatest comic book films ever, and touted as having some crazy cameos. For the former, it's very good, but maybe a smidge overhyped. For the latter, it definitely has those crazy cameos, but not as many as I think were teased since a bunch were in the marketing, and it doesn't help that the director himself spoiled one of the biggest ones weeks ago for me, and it was on headlines and articles on news sites, so it was ruined. Moment was still cool, and there's still some other really good ones. I do think my expectations were mostly in check. Spider-Man No Way Home elevated multiverse cameo appearances, and Multiverse of Madness teased far more, but I checked my expectations there and had a good time, despite the title suggesting otherwise. The Flash definitely has moments of fan service for me, but it was never at the cost of the story to where they became distracting. In fact, the moments they used weren't for shock value, but to showcase the multiverse and the stakes of what was happening to it. Maybe them all being CGI characters and backgrounds wasn't the greatest looking thing, but it still worked for me given the circumstances at play with the ones used. There's a huge surprise I couldn't believe was in the movie. So yeah, it delivered, even if it showed more restraint than I think was teased, and it didn't have a madness multiverse in the title to elevate expectations. So there's a balance there. I've seen some that are claiming it's all empty fan service or too messy or bogged down by so many elements to not become enjoyable, and I'm going to call out that bias here now. Yes, Ezra Miller has had a problematic personal life and caused issues. Separate the art from the artist here and don't let news headlines of someone's personal life affect the piece that they're in. Especially in this case, let it be its own. That's not film criticism if you're letting that dictate the quality of the filmmaking on display here. And I'm probably going to get flack for this, but secondly, as is the case with all DC films, there's a huge Marvel bias. People loved the multiverse in No Way Home and in Spider-Verse movies. I think those films handle the fan service and story balance the best so far. That doesn't mean others aren't as good or bad. Doctor Strange was criticized for not showing enough or using it only for shock value but people still generally enjoyed the movie, seemingly. The Flash is somewhere in between those, and suddenly it's this huge problem for critics and fans I see that like the others. I find that to be a huge problem and really inconsistent position. I approach them all the same, and The Flash did a good job with that balance. So criticizing something like this for having too many cameos and too much fan service when it doesn't have near the amount that Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse does is whack. This movie is surprisingly funny though. Ezra Miller gives two very distinct performances, the classic one still funny but full conviction, and the younger Barry has the wide-eyed immaturity that is endearing but sometimes too much. Too silly, too comical, and occasionally annoying yet still kind of fun. That choice does emphasize a climactic moment in the finale, so I see why they went with the dichotomy that they did because it makes the impact land that much harder. Michael Keaton back as Batman is the highlight. How they modernize his theme, the way he moves, his combat, his characterization is all wonderful. I think I would have liked more of an exploration of an aging Batman feeling useful or able or what it does to his body. There's hints of this, and what we get is really nice with subtle pathos at play, Keaton owns every second he gets, even if he maybe uses one too many catchphrases from the original movie. But his Batman fight sequences are awesome and some of the best we've ever seen from Batman. I could have gone for more. I was a little disappointed with how little Supergirl is used though. But when she's there, her role is mostly effective and cool. We just don't really get to know her and I sort of doubt we'll ever see this iteration again. Same thing with Zod, he's there to provide history as one of the best villains in the DCEU and hits a lot of the same plot beats. Yeah, he's not much of a main villain, villains are in the movie but really time is the villain here. The multiverse and its consequences is. I was hoping for a little bit more from Zod though, it's hard to complain too much when so much focus is on the Flash however. The Kryptonians provide that huge physical threat in a way to bring the DCEU full circle to Man of Steel, which was cool. The events of that movie are featured heavily here, and there's even a small retcon to the events of Man of Steel that connects to this movie that I thought was really, really impactful. In fact, the movie is such a love letter to DC, but especially the DCEU and what it has done that I was fully vested, smiling ear to ear, having a blast. The opening felt like another Justice League movie I've wanted for years. Certain cameos that were filmed don't happen that I wanted, and all. Plus there's this feeling that this is all for nothing since it will effectively be abandoned just like in Shazam. But I deeply appreciate the love for the material we have gotten so far on display here. It leaves me sad still as we also know there's a very different ending to this film out there thanks to the leaks that I caught up on and some other canceled movies. I think my favorite thing is how personal the story, character arc, and journey are for Barry. It hits hard, it's well executed, and despite the craziness, 
I feel that the film never lost focus on putting Barry's journey first and foremost. I think Ezra got a lot of complaints being too close to Wally West characterization originally, but Miller really grows into the role here in The Flash We Know and Love. I will also say, it borrows a lot. And I mean a lot of plot points that the Flash CW series covered extensively with more time to flesh those out. That's not a bad thing, but I guessed a couple big twists early on and some of the ending due to the similarities within. That's okay. When you're using the source material on both adaptations so well, it doesn't really matter. But I will say it can feel like repeated storytelling for the fans of that series like I was for some time. The ending itself is a little bit confusing on where everything lands timeline wise and the post credit scenes kind of make that worse even though it's fun. I'll get more into that in the spoiler discussion but I was left scratching my head on the specifics and also more sadness that it will probably never be fully resolved but I guess we'll see. Supposedly a sequel is still on the table though. And if they use the Flash as a as a way to hop universes while the new DCU is still being built and we can revisit these older characters and actors, that'd be really cool. Doubtful, but it would be really cool. A big thing I need to mention that people are complaining about is the VFX. There is some mind-bending, incredible work with the Speed Force that feels so unique to the film visually, but the people within it, the Flashies, weird. It was always consistently that way, looking weird, and confirmed to be a choice by the director to make it look weird. And I picked up on that while watching, since it was so consistent this way. So because of that, it didn't really bother me as it came off as an effect of the speed force and seeing through it. It can be very off-putting, and it does create some scary looking babies at one point, but that choice to make it look bizarre won't work for everyone. And it'll be a slam against iffy CGI everywhere you see, blah blah blah, same old, same old. Stuff like that I notice, but it's secondary until it becomes detrimental to the story, or it takes me out of the film. Weird babies aside, that scene still got me scared for stakes at play as a dad. But you get kind of used to it, and it almost seems as if the speed force Force, since it shapes time and the people look like clay and it's almost like they're clay being shaped by the time it's I don't know that's where I went with it in my head while watching actually but consistency was important to me and it was and this is another thing I'll get into with my spoilers but as far as which Justice League film is canon to this one it's pretty clear if you pay attention in the film there's one supposed line of dialogue I missed I need to go see it again for that apparently was in some test screenings but I can't remember if it was in this but two other big references in visuals and dialogue confirm my suspicions of which one is canon. Pay attention and you will see. The more I talk about this, the more I loved it. It feels like a swan song to the DCU that I loved, even though we have Aquaman 2 still coming, whether that's in this universe or a new one, who knows? We'll find out. The Flash may not be the biggest multiverse movie or the massive reset or even the best thing since sliced bread that it was all teased to be, but it still succeeds in all of those other areas for me. It's a great time at the movies. For those of us that loved, cherished, and will miss the DCEU when it was at its best, this is a fine addition to that collection, a swan song, and probably the closest thing to a send off we will ever get. And they did good with it. I give The Flash. 4.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks so much for watching. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, ring the bell to be notified of all videos coming soon because we have a spoiler discussion coming up. And remember, always look for the good.